What's up guys, Asian here again with another gear video and today we're going to be going over tanking gear video. Uh, so just like the videos that I've covered in the past with gear, uh, this is specifically looking at any sort of gear you might want to have on hand as a tank for endgame PvE content. You will also be going over just sort of generic tanking things, things that are common among all six classes uh, when you are playing as a tank. So this video will not be going over any sort of skills, any sort of rotations, or generally any advice about tanking. This video is specifically about the gear and any sort of just generic tanking things you will want to have as a uh, character in general. So if you're interested in knowing what a specific class tank would look like, make sure to check out the links in the description below uh, as these builds are released over the next two weeks. Uh, for your specific class. So let's go ahead and get started here. I will first show you guys what I'm wearing currently and then we'll be going over all the various sets that you're going to want to have on hand as a tank. Uh, in ESO, tanking is kind of viewed less as a damage sponge and more of a sort of buff debuffer. Uh, obviously your first role is of course to soak up the damage from the boss, but just as important especially as you kind of climb higher in the endgame PvE ladder so to speak, progression. Uh, being able to manage your buffs and debuffs is very important. So our sets are going to be spread across a lot of different armor weights. So we have heavy, medium, and light armor. Uh, so we will be discussing all of those uh, as we go down the list here. Starting off first with what I'm wearing here. This is a very typical tanking setup. It is not the only tanking setup, and it does depend on what your second tank, if there's a second tank, what that tank is wearing. So for our Monster Helm set, we're going with Symphony of Blades, which comes from Depths of Malatar. This is the strongest support Monster Helm set in the game right now uh, for both healers and tanks. Now, the one thing to keep in mind with Symphony of Blades is it does require you to have a heal on your bar, and it cannot be a self-heal. It needs to be a heal that goes out to the group. So whether that's something like Energy Orbs or some sort of uh, class AoE heal, for example, uh, you just need to make sure to have a heal on your bar that heals other people. Uh, this restores 23-25 magic or stamina every second for 6 seconds, once every 18 seconds, so it actually returns quite a bit of additional resources, and so it's a very strong support for DPS. For our first, uh, first five piece set here, we're going with Perfected Yolnacreen. You can also go with the non-perfect version of this set. It doesn't change the unique five piece. The only thing it adds is the additional max health, which ultimately, while it is nice to have, it is not essential to have on a tank. So Perfected Claw of Yolnacreen comes from Veteran Sunspire. The non-perfect version comes from Normal Sunspire. Currently, this is the only set in the game that provides minor courage, and the proc condition is on a taunt, so it must be on a tank. You can't wear it on any other, other spec. Uh, so, as the only source of Minor Courage, it obviously does make its way into the tanking toolkit. Our second set is Elkosh, which comes from Maw of Lorkaj. Elkosh is a medium armor set, so you will need to run it on the jewelry and weapons like I have here. Uh, you can... In theory, run it as a body set. Uh, you will have to dodge roll quite a bit there, and, but that's mostly reserved for very specific scenarios as well as very advanced tanks. So if you're just starting to learn how to tank, don't want to go with Alkosh on the body, just make sure to get Alkosh jewelry and weapons. We have sword and board on one bar, and then on our back bar we have a lightning staff. You can also go with a frost staff or a bow. Each of these different weapon types will be used for different purposes. So a lightning staff will help with off-balance uptime. An ice staff will help with a little additional mitigation while you're on your back bar if you just want to feel a little bit more comfortable blocking while you're on your staff. And the bow is typically used for uh, tanks that also want to do a little bit more DPS because Endless Hail and uh, Arrow Barrage will end up doing more damage in general uh, than Block Aid will because your stamina and weapon damage, typically speaking, will be higher uh, as a tank. Now for weapon traits and armor traits and enchants. So we have Crusher Enchant and Infused on the back bar, regardless of which weapon you use, you will want to go with an Infused Crusher Enchant. Uh, this is assuming, of course, that you are the one responsible for the Crusher Enchant. Some groups will have the Healer use the Crusher Enchant, uh, so in that instance, you can replace Crusher with some other Enchant, something like Weakening, or maybe Absorb Stamina, Absorb Health, depending on what you need. Now for the front bar, uh, your Sword and Board bar, I should say, 
you have a lot of options when it comes to enchants and traits here. So I just have decisive and I did double down on the crusher enchant, but you can replace this enchant with something like a weakening enchant, absorb health, absorb stam, absorb magicka, a hardening enchant. It really depends on what you need uh, out of your tank. And then for your trait, I have decisive here. You can go with any other trait in the game. You can go infuse if you want a little bit stronger enchant, defending if you want a little bit more resistances, and so on. So it's kind of up to you how you want to uh, run your front bar weapon here. Uh, for jewelry, uh, I have all triune with all bracing enchants. Other common enchants you might see being run are going to be things like Magicka Regen in order to get more Magicka back, uh, as well as Potion Cooldown Glyphs uh, just to help uh, reduce the cooldown on your Tri Potion so that we can get drink them a little bit uh, more frequently, which gives you better sustain. Now, one of the downsides with potion cooldown glyphs is you will be drinking more potions over the same period of time, so it actually does end up eating into your wall a little bit, so just be mindful of that. For traits, I have all triune enchants uh, traits here, but you can go with a bunch of other traits depending on what you need. So you can go with the base game traits like healthy, robust, or arcane, depending on which resource you need. You can also go with infuse for slightly stronger uh, enchants. Uh, you can also go with harmony if you'd like for a little bit stronger synergy return. So you get more resources back when you get an orb, you get a little bit more healing done when you pop your blood altar synergy, and so on. So you have a lot of options here when it comes to jewelry enchants and traits. Now, for armor traits and enchants, much like jewelry and weapons, you have a lot of flexibility here. So I personally am a fan of sturdy on my small pieces and infused on my large pieces. I have prismatic enchants on my large pieces here, and then I have health enchants on my small pieces. But you can change out these max health enchants for things like prismatic enchants, or if you want a little bit more stamina, go with the max stamina enchant. So you have a lot of flexibility in terms of enchants. Uh, a lot of tanks, for example, might run all prismatic enchants on all of the armor pieces there. It's kind of up to you how you want to build your own uh, resource pool using uh, your various armor enchants here. Now for other armor sets you're going to want to have on hand, we will start off first with heavy armor sets and move on to a couple medium and light armor sets. So under the dungeon sets, the first one you're going to want to pick up is going to be Ebon Armory. This comes from Crypt of Hearts, so this is a base game set. Uh, so heavy armor, so you can wear this as the body. Now you're going to want to avoid wearing it as the weapons while they have claimed to have fixed the bug uh, where Ebon swapping uh, your weapons, your Evan weapons, does not uh, change the health. It does happen on occasion, so I would just recommend using Evan as your armor piece so it's active on both bars uh, without having to bar swap here. This provides some additional max health so that your DPS can focus in on doing DPS and invest less of their resources into survivability. Uh, in terms of other heavy armor sets, uh, Leeching Plates pretty decent if you need a good survivability set because it does deal quite a bit of poison damage and it also heals you for the poison damage that you've dealt so pretty useful especially in sort of trash pulls where you might want just additional survivability uh, and deal a little bit of damage at the same time but generally speaking not something you're going to see being used very often in endgame pve this is more kind of a progression set so to speak uh, then we have Jailer's Tenacity, which gives you major vitality when you lose 7,000 or more health in a single attack. Uh, this is pretty useful uh, in very specific scenarios. Uh, mainly, I've seen it being used for progression guilds for Cloud Rest to get that major vitality when you get hit by Baneful Mark and Execute. Uh, but generally speaking, not very useful anywhere else. Uh, so this is a set that you might want to pass up, especially because it is a DLC set and you do need to farm for it for Moon Hunter Keep. So it might not be worth farming for this set if you're only going to be using it for a handful of fights in the game. And then we have Dragon's Defilement, which is pretty decent for trash pulls and especially if you don't have a stamina templar uh, so when you take damage from a melee attack you gain a corrupting aura for five seconds that applies minor fracture and minor breach to all enemies around you this is essentially an aoe power of the light so pretty nice to have for trash pulls now if you have a stamplar in group you're obviously not going to necessarily want to run this set it really depends on how quickly you run your killing trash whether you need additional penetration bonus from minor fracture or minor breach um, but for single target boss fights dragon's defilement is not a set you're going to be running especially if you already have a stamplar in group who will be able to provide the same debuffs using power of the light or even a templar healer as long as you have a templar healer or stamina templar in group dragon's defilement does lose a lot of its potential here because they can apply the same debuffs that Dragon's Defilement provides. Uh, 
uh, and that's pretty much it for dungeon sets. Now, in terms of overland sets, there are a handful of overland sets that are potentially useful to have on hand. First one's going to be Plague Doctor, which is the stereotypical kind of fits into the stereotypical mold of an MMO tank, which is just a bunch of health, which is basically a meat sponge. Great for progression, but doesn't really provide any sort of group support, so you will want to kind of swap this set out for a more group-oriented set uh, once you're comfortable enough with the fight. Warrior Poet and Green Pact, they also fall under that sort of same category of providing additional health, uh, but generally speaking, not very group oriented. Warrior Poet also kind of doesn't really help as much because it gives you minor toughness, which you get from a Warden Healer, so not very useful there. Then you have Dragon Dragonguard, which reduces the cost of your ultimate by 15%. This essentially allows you to get more Warhorns up, which improves your major force uptime, which in turn improves overall DPS. Uh, so this is a base game set from East March, so pretty easy to pick up, uh, especially if you don't have any other good sets to run. This is usually my fallback set when I don't really have a set that my raid lead is telling me I have to wear. Uh, outside of that, uh, that's pretty much it for heavy armor overland sets. Now for crafted sets, there is one crafted set that might be useful for tanks, and that is going to be Torog's Pact, which is a base game set, which requires three traits to craft, so you need to know three traits in whatever armor piece or weapon you want to craft it in. Uh, so if you are just starting off in the game and you don't know enough traits, you can always buy this off of guild traders or you can commission somebody to craft it for you. This decreases weapon enchant cooldown and increases non-oblivion damage enchant potency by 30%. Basically, it increases the potency of your enchant so your crusher enchant normally deals 2108 debuff uh, with torg's pact it now deals 2740 debuff to your physical and spell resistance to your enemy's physical and spell resistance so this is useful to have on hand just for the additional uh, resistance debuff that you get from crusher but that's the only crafted set that's actually of any use in end game pve content now there are no heavy trial sets that are going to be useful outside of yolna queen and we've already covered yolna queen now, in terms of medium armor sets, there are a handful of medium armor sets, and I'll go over them very quickly here. The first one is a dungeon set, and it's known as Hercene's Veneer. So this comes from Selene's Web, so it's a base game set. Now, much like Alkosh, as a medium armor set, you're going to want to run this as your jewelry and weapons, uh, because it is medium armor, so you're not going to be able to get your heavy armor passive bonuses by wearing this on the body. This is the cost of your stamina abilities by 4% for you and up to 11 other group members within 28 meters of you. So if you're in a very stamina DPS heavy group, Hercene's Veneer is a nice set to have on hand. You might not wear this, sometimes the healer will be wearing this, but it's good to have this set on hand in case your healers don't have it or the sets that your healers are wearing doesn't really give them any space for Hercene's. Uh, that's pretty much it for medium armor sets. Now there is a light armor set as well. Nope, it's not an overland set. It's actually a dungeon set. So it is, let's try to find it here, Worm's Raiment. So this is another base game set from Vault of Madness, and this is essentially the magic version of Hercene's Veneer. So again, jewelry and weapons, because it's a light armor set, you don't want to lose your heavy armor passive bonuses unless you're a very, very advanced tank here. And much like Hercene's, Worm is going to be useful for Magicka DPS heavy groups. Uh, so... Generally speaking, Worm is going to be a little bit more beneficial in mixed groups. Those are groups with both Magicka and Stamina DPS. Uh, but it's kind of up to the Raid Lead to decide in those groups whether they want to run Worm, Hercene, or both. Uh, so just pay attention. Again, this is another set that you might have the healer run rather than the tank. But it is good to have on hand in case the healers are not able to run it for whatever reason. Uh, in terms of other sets here, uh, there is a trial set that you might want to pick up that is a light armor set and that's going to be Ola Rime. Uh, so this is mostly used in four man content when you're doing one tank three DPS so not a very common thing to see happen uh, for progression style guilds but if you are kind of at that level where you guys might want to consider running one tank three DPS Ola Rime is going to be a set that you're going to want to run here just so you still have major courage. Uh, so this is a light armor set so again jewelry and weapons don't necessarily want to run it on the body. Uh, now there is a Cyrodiil set I do want to point out here, which is useful, but only kind of situationally so, and it's not quite as important as the other sets that we've talked about. Find it here, uh, or maybe it is under Detelvar sets. 
is on the Telvar. Let's see. Yeah, so here it is on a Telvar. It is powerful assault. So this is a medium armor set. So much like Alkosh, Hercines, and Worm, jewelry and weapons. So when you cast an assault ability, you and up to three allies within 50 meters gain 164 weapon and spell down for 15 seconds. Now this is unique, so it does stack on top of Major Courage and Minor Courage, but it does require you to cast an assault ability. Usually that'll be something like Caltrops or Vigor, and it only affects four people. So you and up to three allies within 15 meters of you. Nephis has done a pretty good video on the prioritization of Powerful Assault, and generally speaking, it's a little bit too much micromanagement for too little of a return. Now, if there's nothing else to run, you can always run Powerful Assault if you have this set. But generally speaking, it's going to be a little bit too micromanagement, too much micromanagement for most players to make use of. So while you can get this set, I don't normally recommend specifically going for this set, specifically farming for this set, unless you have a bunch of Telvar that you want to spend uh, on the Telvar trader in Imperial City. Uh, now for Monster Helm sets. There are a couple of other Monster Helm sets that you might want to run outside of Symphony of Blades. Uh, let's see here. First, we're going to talk about... Where is it? Uh, Earth Gore is a pretty situationally useful set here. Uh, so it does proc off of self heals and outside heals, so you can heal somebody else or heal you. And it just basically gives you a very huge burst heal over 6 seconds. Uh, so in cases where you might be separated out from the healer and you might need a little bit of burst heal, mostly usually for progression kind of stuff, but uh, it can also be used outside of the sort of scenario here. <laughs> Earth Gore is a pretty strong set to run, so definitely a set that you might want to have hold on to here. This comes from Veteran Bloodroot Forge. Uh, another set is going to be Lord Warden. Uh, this comes from Imperial City Prison here. This just gives a bunch of resistances, not just to you, but also to uh, allies around you within 8 meters. Um, so this just helps out overall swappability. So pretty useful to have. This is a pretty nice set to run in trash fights as well, because mostly you guys will be grouped up, and so everybody will be able to get that additional resistances for some additional swappability. Then we have Bloodspawn, which is the only real base game monster helm set that I'd recommend tanks running. Uh, so when you take damage, you have a chance to generate ultimate and increase your resistances. Uh, you're not really running it for the resistance boost, you're mainly running it for the ultimate generation, so that way you can get faster warhorns, so you can get better major force uptime. Then we have Thervican, which is an AoE minor main, which comes from Fang Lair. Pretty nice for trash fights, really great for going for things like uh, Trinity achievements, speedrun no death, uh, hard mode achievements in dungeons. Uh, so definitely a set that's potentially fairly useful here uh, if you're in, kind of into that four-man content stuff. Then we have Bicosa, which reduces weapon and spell damage by 20% once you bash an enemy that you've taunted. So really nice if you're able to time it well uh, to help reduce incoming damage. Uh, so really good for progression style stuff, and as well as high damage scenarios. This comes from Moonhunter to Keep. Then if you need some additional sustain, you can go Stonekeeper, which comes from Veteran Frost Vault. So when you block an attack, you gain an energy charge stack, up to one stack per second. And when you gain six charges, you get 53, 50 stamina, magicka, and health. Now, it is boosted here because of CPs, uh, but the base is 5350. And then once you get the resources back, you can't regain new charges for 14 seconds. This basically gives it a 20 second cooldown. So if you do need some additional resources, Stonekeeper is a pretty good set to hold on to uh, if you're having trouble sustaining as a tank. So that pretty much covers it for all of our set stuff. Now for going over our character sheet. So I am a Nord. Nords are going to be one of the better races when it comes to tanking. Generally speaking, races don't really matter as much for tanks as it does on a DPS or even a healer. You can tank realistically on any class in the game, uh, so or any race in the game. So Nords just give you a little bit of additional boost uh, because of their class passive. They get some additional health, additional stamina, and they get some additional resistances. So you don't necessarily have to pay attention as much to your overall resistances here as in Nord. Now, for your attributes, this is going to vary depending on your race, because different races have different passive so for example those of you guys who follow me on twitch know that i tank on a dark elf most of my tunes are dark elves and dark elves don't get any bonuses to health so as a dark elf i would need to put more points in the health than i have here as a nord kind of same thing goes for imperials uh so those of you guys who play imperial tanks you might not need as many points in the health because you have more health compared to a nord generally the rule of thumb is to try to hit around thirty-five thousand health 
and then you want to try to hit at least 20,000 Magicka and Stamina. And this is obviously with all of your buffs active. So things like Ebon, Minor Toughness, War, uh, Warhorn Boost to your Magicka and Stamina, and so on. Uh, so those are kind of the rough numbers that you're going to want to hit here. As uh, so you can see here, I'm sitting at 20.9 max Magicka, 22.8 max Stamina, and 35.1 max Health. So I'm hitting those numbers there pretty decently well with this particular attribute setup. So just play around with your attribute numbers until you kind of hit those uh, sweet spots there. For Mundus, you have a few options. I like the Atronach for the additional Magicka regen, but you do have several options, uh, kind of depending on really what you kind of want out of things. So if you're doing more off DPS and off tanking, you might want to run something like the Thief or the Shadow, for example. Uh, if you are fine with Magicka regen because you're making good use of balance, uh, maybe you want some additional movement speed, uh, so you might run the Steed instead. Maybe you just want to pad up your health a little bit more, so you run the Lord. So just play around with Munda Stones depending on what you need most out of your build. Now for food, I'm running Bewitched Sugar Skulls, which is a tri-stat food that you can get. Uh, it is actually fairly cheap to make here. Uh, so it's relatively cheap. Uh, the most expensive thing is going to be the two Columbine. Uh, so definitely try to use it if you can. But if you can't afford to use uh, Sugar Skulls, then you can go with the base game Purple Food uh, here. So it gives you a little bit less resources and doesn't give you the health regen. But it's a lot cheaper to buy and a lot cheaper uh, to make as well. So you can run either of these depending on what your wallet is able to afford at the time. Finally, our CP points. So your CPs are pretty much going to remain exactly the same across the different classes here uh, because we're a support role mainly. So our CPs aren't really going to change too much across classes. We have, oh, I have 65 in Arcanist when it should be 64 in Arcanist. 64 in Arcanist, 56 in Tenacity, 61 in Shadow Ward, 44 Tumbling, 44 Warlord. We still have one point remaining, so you can really put that wherever you'd like. You're not going to hit any jump points with this. Uh, generally speaking, you can drop some points out of Tenacity if you'd like. If you're feeling your sustain is perfectly fine, you can drop some points out of that and shift them elsewhere uh, depending on what you want. This way, you do get the wind running passive, so you do get additional movement speed. So it's always nice to have that little additional movement speed there. So it's, I like to pick this passive up. For blue CPs, blue CPs are generally focused around DPS. So there's really not much variation here when it comes to tanking across different classes. 100 Blast, 81 Elfborn, and then uh, 81 Precise Strikes. If you're running something like Vigor, for example, or you have some other form of stamina healing, it's always nice to have that there. Then we have eight remaining points, so we put that into Piercing. Now, if you are off DPSing, then you might want to shift into a more DPS-oriented spec, but that's going to be dependent on your specific build and what your raid lead needs and things like that. Generally speaking, most advanced, uh, most tanks will not be running a DPS blue CP spec, but very, very advanced tanks where you're kind of pushing for speed, you might want to run that. Finally, red CPs. A generic one-size-fits-most approach is probably going to serve you the best as a tank because you will be taking both physical and spell damage as a tank, uh, regardless of trial. Uh, but if you want to kind of maximize your mitigation, there are a few red CP distributions out there uh, that best maximize for any specific piece of content. So we have 81 Ironclad, 61 Thick Skin, and 64 in both Hardy and Elemental Defender. And that pretty much covers it for all of the tanking stuff for gear as well as just generic class agnostic stuff. If you guys have any questions about what was covered in this video, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. In addition, in the description below, you'll also find a list of all the sets that I've talked about as well as a couple that I probably missed uh, during this video here. As well as whether you want to run it as a body set or whether you want to run it as a jewelry set. So typically speaking, jewelry and weapon sets will be those medium and light armor sets. Again, very advanced tanks might be able to make use of those as body sets, but most tanks will not be able to. So I will point out uh, where uh, which sets are medium and light, and so you're going to want to run them as weapons rather than on the body. Uh, but that concludes this video. Hopefully you guys found this informative. Again, links in the description below to class-specific tank builds, as well as a list of all of the sets that I talked about today, as well as a few that I probably missed. Again, hope you guys found this video informative, and I'll see you guys in the next dungeon.